Well, so I guess uh, that's a little of your background. So I guess the real reason we want to talk today is, uh, you know, can you tell us a journey that led you to the creation of the world's first fully electric driver optional tractor? Yeah, so for me, um, it's very much from a manufacturing lens. <clears throat> and um, the first time my co-founder started uh, talking to me about this idea, I think it was uh, 2017, and um, I looked at the farming space, and I'm not a farmer. Um, nobody in my family is a farmer. Never driven a tractor. Um, you know, what what is this thing? Um, and I looked at the farming space and looked around for electrified vehicles. There was nothing. There's there's no electrified vehicles in farming in 2017. Um, then I really looked at it from a manufacturing lens to say, what is a farm anyway? Um, and to me, I, I don't see, you know, a farm, I see a food factory. Um, and the the equipment moves, but essentially you've got manufacturing process equipment. The process is the seasons of the year and what happens to the crop and then what's done to the crop. And so what I didn't see was really manufacturing discipline, manufacturing technology, uh, or a manufacturing approach to farming. Um, also, you have a, a big difference where in manufacturing you have sort of um, 90% control and 10% variability. You sort of have the opposite in farming where it's highly variable, um, uh, very, very little control unless it's really indoor farming. But indoor farm farming is just too small to be able to really solve any food challenge. So what I saw there was a great opportunity to bring all that you know, I've learned from the manufacturing sector and then apply it somewhere else. And then combined with electrification was a really easy sell for me to say, you know, this is a problem that I, I really want to go after. Uh, um, so, you know, what is your vision for the future for, you know, the sustainable farming and where's Marna going from here? You know, um, we've had uh, a great experience so far here in California and a lot of fruits and vegetables and permacrops, a uh, lot of deployment into vineyards. But what we've learned is that the tractor does really well in other high utilization environments. So one of the areas that we're seeing the fastest growth is actually dairies. Um, dairies is a, a really interesting one because essentially the tractors are used like every day, multiple times a day, but in a fairly light duty application. And it really does the same thing over and over again, which is feed pushing. Um, and this has a fantastic ROI because we're pulling the cost out of the operation. But if you can be very, very consistent and feed pushing, and you know this, you worked in, you worked in dairies, um, the cattle eat more, they make more milk. Um, so you see this great wedge and ROI on both sides of things. So uh, this is just a fantastic market for us. And the U.S. has a lot of large dairies where the tractor is really interesting because it can actually go from corral to corral versus the other robotics that you see in dairies today, which can really only stay very, on, very much on like a flat surface like you'd see in a factory. They can't really go from corral to, to, to corral. Yeah, when you get into the off-road side of things, yeah, I, I did a pro couple of projects on, uh, you know, automated feeding and uh, automated milking and things of that nature. Like I said, we've worked on we've worked on a little bit of everything. You know, even worked on rice harvesting equipment. Uh, you name it. Um, so. You know, I was looking through the specs on your website and, you know, you're claiming 14 hours of runtime and yeah, I can see, you know, on a dairy farm. Yeah, that's probably true. Uh, but the other thing you mentioned is, uh, uh, what was it? Uh, you have a 5.6 kilowatt exportable power. I wasn't sure. What does that mean? It means that uh, you can use the uh, the tractor like a mobile battery pack and power things out in the middle of the field, whether it's like a point solution, like a welder that, let's say you broke an implement and you need to get a welder out because you can't tow that thing in. Well, then you can plug it directly into a tractor. We've also seen a number of interesting things that farmers have done with this. For example, um, in harvest during the vineyard season, powering the way station rather than using a jenny um, is something that every single operator really appreciates rather than sitting around sniffing diesel fumes and uh, basically sitting there with your ears uh, just ringing from the sound. So uh, they really, really have liked uh, using it for that application at that time. Uh, we see a number of different ways, though. One of the big ones is lighting. Lighting during harvest um, is uh, an another way that we can kind of use the exportable power without you know, running a generator or running an engine. 
just think about you said you designed around the battery pack so can you maybe talk a little bit like how did you pull in the chassis side what do you what kind of transmission do you have or how do you you know put the power to the wheels yeah so this is one of the unique things that we've done from a packaging standpoint that's really cool uh basically we married an existing transaxle um so with a with an existing nine plus three uh transmission um and then um we mount the uh the primary motor in a transverse direction so we use a spiral bevel um to to transfer the power over and then um Basically, the primary hydraulic pump is also driven off of that primary motor. And then the high voltage connection is in between all of that. So basically, we kind of stuffed it all together. And then for shifting, it's an automated manual. So basically, we designed an automated shifting mechanism that you can punch in with keys on, on the uh, basically on the armrest. So um, and then we also bolted the primary hydraulic manifold on top of the transmission. So essentially everything is connected together in this way for efficiency. Okay. So uh, on the transmission, so you just basically drive in the hydrostatic transmission design or just... No hydrostatic, uh, um, pure manual. P pure manual. Okay. And then, but you said the PTOs run off of that as well? That's correct. So it's all run off of the primary hydro, um, sorry, the primary motor. Um, and this makes sure that we can apply maximum power to the wheels, maximum power to the PTO, and maximum power to the hydraulics all at the same time. So there's no corner case where we can't do something because we're distributing power. Okay. Um, so with the hydraulics, um, is that for the steering and braking as well? or It is. So it's, it's very well integrated then. So it's basically you got that the hydraulics is going to be on and then you're just going to, you probably have pressure regulation. And you, like you said, you had a manifold and you're just going to divert it to where you need it then. That's correct. It's always spooled up uh, whenever it's in operation because of the need to have the hydraulics uh, for implement function. It didn't make sense to go away from that for steering and braking and make it electric. Uh, it's much more cost effective to use that. Okay. Yeah, it sounds like you did a good job on it. We might be able to take a little bit of cost out of it for you. I hope so. <laughs> uh, so what about power distribution, you know, from the battery? So you got 400 volts, that's running your main motor. Uh, what other power needs does a tractor have? I'm assuming a 12 volt for just your instrumentation, things of that nature. We have two different screens for instrumentation. One is a control screen and one is uh, basically just a cluster. Um, then we have also the loads in the roof for perception, uh, compute, connectivity, um, lighting, all of those things. Really, the way to think about power on, on the tractor is it's 90% PTO and, uh, and implement function, 9% wheels, and 1% uh, the roof, which has all of those systems. Yeah. So are those like 12 volt then? Uh, yes. Yeah. So you have a DC-DC charger, I'm assuming? We do. All right. Um, how many contactors do you do? You have like your positive, negative, and do you have a pre-charge or are you using like bi-directional from the DC DC to, you know, to charge up your capacitors and the, for your inverter? The way that our battery is constructed is, is two strings. Um, so two different sets of contactors. And then um, essentially the, um, uh, the way that it connects, uh, we have a 12 volt battery operating on the uh, the 12 volt side, um, which is connected to the DC to DC um, converter, uh, which also is um, functions as our onboard charger. So it's actually built into the same unit. Okay, so like you don't have a precharge contactor circuit. You're just you're using the onboard charger or DC DC for that. That's correct. Okay. Yeah, I keep trying to get people to do that, and they always seem to want to fight that. Oh, no, we have to have it. Um, so uh, just thinking about uh, the autonomous side of it, uh, since you worked at Tesla, are you just basically camera-based, or do you have LiDAR, radar, ultrasonic? Well, it's not the... Of? It's not the Tesla side that has driven us to vision only. It's uh, it's the cost side. We want to make sure that the product is ag robust, um, and that means uh, spinning lidars are probably not going to survive in the environment. And then 
Radar technology is interesting for long distance and being able to detect objects, you know, 100 meters down the road or something like that. But if we're going two, three miles an hour in an autonomous operation, we only need, you know, um, my arms, uh, and I'm not, a, I'm, not, I'm not a tall guy, uh, my arms are more than enough stopping distance. So um, really, it's vision that, that we really need to train. Uh, it's the right um, sensor for the application. But, so do I have to worry about the neighbor's cat walking in front of the tractor? Um, you could, but uh, we've trained it to recognize all sorts of objects, not just humans, uh, but animals as well and wait for human input just in case. 